Hey everyone, and welcome to another XAM tutorial. Today, I want to explain you, how DPI affects your XAM mouse movements, and what the best mouse DPI settings for your personal gaming setup are. In addition to that, I will also cover how DPI affects the aim assist, how you can ensure that your mouse runs on the correct DPI profile, and how you can calculate your new XAM sensitivity when you change your DPI settings to keep the same turn speed as before. But before we will go through all of these topics, I want to answer the most important question right away. The perfect DPI settings are around 3000 to 4000 DPI. With this you will get the most out of your mouse and your XM. If you want to find out why, then I strongly recommend you to continue watching this video. Let's start with the first topic. What does DPI mean, and what is its purpose? DPI stands for dots per inch, it's a value that tells you the amount of dots, that are placed in a line with the length of 1 inch, which is around 2.5 centimeters. To simplify this explanation, DPI is basically a resolution scale. The higher the mouse DPI, the finer and more precise your mouse sensor will scan your mouse pad surface to identify your mouse movements. Here, you can see an example picture of how the resolution increases with higher DPI values. Just by looking at the picture, you can already see, that higher DPI must be better than lower DPI values. But how does this apply to the XM? Are higher DPI values always better? In order to answer that, we have to first look at how DPI affects the XM mouse movement, and then what role your XM sensitivity plays, which is the second topic of this video. The XM mouse sensitivity, that you can adjust in your XM manager, is an interpolation value. It tells you by how much your XM is upscaling your mouse movements. The higher your XM sensitivity is, the more your mouse movements are upscaled. This is a very common procedure, and in general, is not a bad thing at all. However, once you have reached a certain XM sensitivity value, you will start to notice the interpolation. Your mouse movements will no longer be perfectly smooth, but choppy, and jitter a bit. This is mostly noticeable when doing slow mouse movements. Here are some examples on how your mouse movements will look like if the XM upscaling is too high. Depending on what XM configuration settings you are using, such as synchronization, or polling, you will reach this point between 100 and 350 XM sensitivity. So how can you prevent this upscaling problem? This is where your mouse DPI comes into play. The more DPI you use with your mouse, the more you can reduce your XM sensitivity while keeping the same mouse speed. In other words, with your mouse DPI, you can ensure to not suffer from the XM upscaling. So lowering your XM sensitivity will automatically mean, that you also reduce the XM upscaling. Your XM is not a PC, where you can run very low DPI values, such as 400, or 800, and expect perfect mouse accuracy. This is why in general, all XM guides will tell you to use the maximum DPI profile of your mouse to ensure you use enough DPI. But how much DPI is needed to avoid the upscaling? And would it not be beneficial to use even more DPI than that? To answer these questions, we have to find out how much DPI is required to guarantee that your XM sensitivity is below 100. Based on user experiences and lots of tests, with a mouse DPI value of around 3000 to 4000, your XM sensitivity will be guaranteed to be below the interpolation threshold, no matter what XM settings such as polling, or synchronization you use. It also doesn't matter if you are a high, or low sensitivity player. With 3000 to 4000 DPI, you will always be on the safe side, the interpolation will be too low to be noticeable. This means, your mouse should have at least 3000 DPI, to guarantee the best possible mouse movements with your XM. But what if your mouse has a maximum DPI profile of 12000? Will your mouse movements be even better with 12000 DPI? The answer to that is no, not really. There are three reasons for why this is not the case. The first reason is that once, the interpolation is no longer noticeable, it doesn't make sense to reduce it even more by using a higher DPI profile. 
you will not be able to tell the difference between the mouse movement quality of the two, because neither of them suffer from interpolation. The second and more important reason, is that higher DPI values will increase the resolution, with which your mouse is scanning, and tracking your mouse pad surface. Think about the DPI resolution picture you saw earlier in this video. At one point the resolution will be so precise, and fine, that even a very tiny object on your mouse pad can cause mouse issues. For example, most cloth mouse pads will irritate the mouse sensor with their cloth fibers, when you use DPI values of above 4000. You will notice mouse stutter, and jitter, when using DPI profiles of higher than 4000. The only surfaces, that you can safely use more DPI on, are extremely flat, and solid surfaces that are perfectly clean, such as plastic pads. If you happen to have such a mouse pad then sure, you can also use 12,000 DPI or more. For everyone else though, a DPI value of 3000 to 4000, will result in much better mouse tracking on the pad, than when using more DPI. Aside from that, quite some mice will add internal smoothing when you use high DPI profiles or their DPI is upscaled by the mouse processor after you exceed a certain DPI level. Unlike the first two reasons, the third reason is not about the technical aspects and limitations of your gaming setup. It is about the aim assist in the game, which also plays a role, when considering very high DPI values. Let's look at the DPI resolution picture again. The higher you set your DPI, the finer and more precise your mouse will scan your mouse pad, this will result in the mouse sensor picking up even the smallest mouse movement that you can do. So, the higher the DPI resolution is, the smaller the movement increments become that your mouse is capable to recognize. These very small movement increments are a problem for the aim assist in the game though. The algorithm of the aim assist is tailored around analog stick movements, if you feed it with non-analog movements, it will get confused, and it will usually stop the aim assist feature. However, the aim assist algorithm is permanently monitoring your movement inputs, and checks if it should activate again. It will result in a very frequent change between an active, and deactivated status. This makes it hard to break into, or out of the aim assist magnetism or slow down bubble. The aim assist will become an obstacle, a barrier, or hurdle that you need to overcome. With very high DPI values, such as 12,000, this is a common problem in games that have a strong aim assist. With a DPI value of 3000 to 4000, this is much less of an issue though. The movement increments, that your mouse recognizes, are noticeably larger, and therefore the aim assist algorithm doesn't receive a big amount of very small inputs. Instead, the algorithm will get larger input packages of lower quantity. This will make your mouse movements look a little bit more like analog stick inputs, the aim assist will therefore not be as much of a problem as with higher DPI values. The range of 3000 to 4000 DPI, offers a better aim assist sweet spot due to the higher granularity of the mouse movements. You can break into the aim assist bubble, or get out of it much easier. You basically play with the aim assist rather than against it. Now that we have covered all the reasons for why 3000 to 4000 DPI is better, let's look at how you can convert your current XAM turn speed sensitivity to a new, and different mouse DPI profile. For this you can use the calculator, that I have linked in the video description below. Here you can see the calculator. In this example, let's say my current DPI profile is 12000, and my XAM sensitivity is 10. I now want to test 4000 DPI, to see how much of a difference it makes, but my turn speed in the game should remain the same. All I need to do now is to type my values into the calculator, and it will tell me what XM sensitivity I have to use with 4000 DPI, to have the exact same turn speed as I had before. In my example, my new XM sensitivity with 4000 DPI is 30. With these settings, my mouse movements will be as fast as with 12,000 DPI and XM sensitivity of 10. When you change your mouse DPI, check the manual of your mouse on how to do that. Some mice offer DPI buttons that you need to press, other mice need to be plugged into the PC, 
and then must be configured via their mouse driver. In this case your mouse will need onboard memory, otherwise, the DPI changes will not carry over to the mouse and the XM. For example, in the Logitech gaming driver you can switch the location, that you want to save your changes to, from the PC to the mouse. You can do that in the opening screen of the driver, which you can see here. If everything went well, your new DPI profile and XM sensitivity should be just as fast as before. If this is not the case, then your DPI changes most likely didn't work, or the values you used for the calculator are faulty. So double check on those, and if necessary, contact your mouse manufacturer about the DPI adjustment procedure, and the onboard memory function. If you have any questions about the XM, or the mouse DPI, just ask in the comments down below. If you liked this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. Also let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below, and I will maybe see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your XM experience.